Hey friends, this is Derek at TCI and in my other videos you've seen me build a lot of CAT6 networks and many of you have asked how do I get the CAT6 wires out of the plenum space of my ceiling and down into the rack. You've been watching me build a lot of what I call chase pipes or maybe you would know them also as sleeves and in order to do that I build them myself out of EMT and this is EMT right here if I would introduce it to you. I'm going to try to do this video in a single take, so just uh, ignore my uh, slip-ups of the tongue here. So EMT is something you can buy directly from uh, like Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. And you can get them up to this diameter at a, your local hardware store. For larger diameters such as this one, you may have to go to ProSource or Granger or Graybar or your local uh, commercial building supply store to get them in a slightly larger diameter. And what they do, uh, these are just metal tubes that are usually, they're usually for uh, installing high voltage, but they work great for CAT6 as well. And all I ever need is a short segment such as this. They sell these in 10 foot, 20 foot, and five foot lengths. And what I do at the store is, I can't fit any of that in my car. I don't have a big enough truck. So, <clears throat> bear with me. So this here is my bandsaw. I bring this along in the car and all I do is I cut this into little segments and then I can transport them. So with the EMT cut down by bandsaw into manageable lengths, what I then do is I will stick this to the wall and I will cross the ceiling. So half of the pipe will be above the ceiling, the other half will be below by my rack. And then I have a transition path where I can just tuck my wires in and pull them out. And you've seen me do that in a variety of uh, videos. <clears throat> Obviously, cutting it straight is a difficult thing to do. And so there are things that you would use, like this blue one is a good example. There are little connectors called set connectors. And these go on the end of your pipe. You screw them down and then that gives you a way to kind of hide the jagged cut that you may or may not have made. I'm not very good at the bandsaw, so they're jagged, but a set connector on both ends creates a little bit better, cleaner look. And they make them in all sizes. So I've got some three quarter, I got some one inch, and then for the big guy, I've got the four inch set connectors. So there's two screws on this. That goes right over it, just like so. And then that's what you're seeing in my videos as my path. Now, if the set connector, if you look closely at it, it's got kind of a sharp edge. So you don't normally want to do this where you're dragging your cables into the pipe and they're crossing this jagged edge right here. It can kind of cut into the jacket. So I also tend to buy these bushing rings and those just go right over that edge and then it gives me something nice and smooth and slippery with less friction that I can pull my wires over. So if I'm trying to like lean on a heavy bundle and bring it down by force, you probably want to have a bushing just to be on the safe side. So this is usually what I use. Bushings come in all sizes, right? So we'll just put that on this set connector here. And then now I've got myself a full transition. So if I do that at both ends, I'll have a very nice pipe that I can then attach to my wall. Speaking of attaching it to my wall, how do I do that? Um, bear with me. I use this product here. This is a uh, Unistrut. So Unistrut is something you get at your local hardware store. It's in the same aisle as these pipes and it's meant to go together with these. You can build all kinds of things out of Unistrut. There's a whole uh, marketplace of little accessories that fit this. But what's relevant to us is I will, using uh, like washers, I'll just stick this right to my wall and then I'll want to attach my pipe directly to the strut. That's what every video needs, the dinging sound of metal clanging. So there's different size uni strut pipe clamps that will fit different diameters of pipe, right? So you just buy the matching size for the diameter that you're installing. So let's pick a good one. So we'll do something like that. It goes right in between the strut. It just locks right in. So 
you can break it apart into individual sections in order to slip it in and you just tighten the screws down and then that pipe's not going anywhere. Once you've got it solidly locked onto your wall with that pipe clamp as tight as you can get it, then you're going to be able to pull your cables through it and you don't have to worry about ripping this thing off the wall. To the best of your ability, always try to get the uni strut into a stud for that extra support. And then for these clamps, you can still rip it right out of a stud. Like if you look, you're creating a bit of a leverage point, right? So if you're going to have a lot of weight coming through this pipe, put a second amount of strut. So we got a second one. Get one above the plenum and one below the plenum by your rack. And then hit it two times. Clamps. That way you've eliminated the lever effect that you get and this will be much more stable, especially if you can hit a stud both times above and below your ceiling. All right. So that's one way. I like the, uh, the EMT tubing a lot. That's redundant. It's like saying ATM machine. I like the EMT a lot because uh, it's really, really strong. It looks fantastic when it's up on the wall and it's invisible to most people. People are surprisingly familiar with pipe all over restaurants, uh, houses, basements, commercial spaces, etc. And they don't think twice when you've used this and you just use it to get between two areas. So if you're transitioning from one wall to the next and you drag a piece of pipe versus just holding your, pit, your uh, cables loosely, they'll see the cables. They won't like that one bit. But if you have a pipe and it happens to be painted the same as the wall, they don't even notice it. No one will even bring it up on your walkthrough when you're taking a look at like all the hard work you did and you want to show off your amazing cabling work. They won't even notice this thing. And that's a, that's a nice thing. When it comes to pro, you want to be invisible. The other thing that I like the EMT for is it's paintable, obviously. So I painted this one because blue meant something at the particular job that this is left over from. And in some jobs, they can be orange, purple, white, green, blue. And that might indicate different sections of a data center, a different kind of cable in it. Maybe some are multi-mode, maybe some are single mode. You could match the colors up. Maybe some are for fire control systems, etc. So, you know, whatever you've got going on, you can paint these and it doesn't hurt it one bit. In fact, it looks all even better than it would look if it was just, uh, you know, unpainted. But unpainted is great as well. Okay, so you saw how much stuff I had to do. I have to buy these in 10 foot lengths. The uni strut is also in 10 foot lengths. I need a lot of little connector things. I need plastic bits. I need clamps. Uh, maybe you're not into all of that. Maybe you need something a little bit similar. So let me set this aside. Okay, so here's another way that you might get them out of the ceiling. This is a product that I use where you lay this on top of your ceiling drop tile and if your ceiling doesn't have any drop tiles this can still work if you've got like say sheetrock for your ceiling as long as you can physically get above it and you know where this thing is you can still cut a hole in the sheetrock but either way you're going to cut a four inch hole matching this diameter up above your ceiling and then you lay this on something in the ceiling that supports it. So it might be ceiling T-bar, uh, could be wire hangers that you've got here, you got little mount, mounting points for. So you might have secured it directly to the ceiling so it can take some weight. If it's just sitting on the ceiling grid T-bar, it's not gonna take much weight. And then what do you do with that? Well, it's just a jagged hole if you cut it. So it comes with these little guys. And these are called riser tubes. So what you do with the riser tube, is better than me you take this apart because it screws together and from the underside of your ceiling you're going to come up with this and from the top of your ceiling you're going to go down with this and i think you can see where we're going we're going to clamp it down over this metal uh, base i won't clamp it all the way down but you get the idea and then you do this just, just to secure it this is a bushing and this gives you 
like a smooth surface to pull your cables over. And then from the underneath of your ceiling, all you see is this, and it's got a nice smooth entry so your cables can go in and out of it, no problem. I can show you a couple of different shots. I'll B-roll those while I'm chatting. And this, is, this works really good, and you can stack them up. So here's another one. If you need a lot of these things on a particular ceiling tile, you can stack them up quite densely. And at four inches, you're easily going to get, what, 180 cables through this and 180 more through that. That's a heck of a rack right there, all in a very dense uh, package. So I like to use this when the ceiling cooperates. Sometimes in the ceiling, the T-bar is in just the worst spot or there is something else above my ceiling where if I'm in the ceiling space and I'm heading for this thing in order to pass my wires through, I usually want to make my service loop. And then as I bring it down, that'll be where I run into plumbing or HVAC or who knows what. And in those situations, uh, we're just going to not be able to use this. We're going to have to do something a little different. So I can't always use this thing, but when I can, I really like the way that it works. You might look into doing this and it doesn't require any special tools. It's just going to be a drywall cutter or a box cutter to make the outlet hole. And then after that, this is mostly a self-contained package. So it's a little easier than the uni strut. Put this one. <clears throat> and then lastly, a method that I use is the grommets, which you've seen me do in a lot of videos where I take a little red grommets. The same company makes these fire stop sleeves. So a fire stop sleeve is meant to go horizontally through the same place a chase pipe might go through. So what you do is you drill a four inch hole right through your wall with the hole saw, and then this thing goes through that, locks together, and then on the inside you can pass your cables through, and there's a gland here that prevents smoke and sound and other things from getting through, and then that creates enough fire stop compliance that you can use this. So normally, I'll lay this out on a wall and I'll have one, two, three, four, five of them, and I'm passing all of my cable bundles through it. It's no problem to get 48 cables through this thing. More than that, I've struggled with, but 48 go through very cleanly, especially if you've combed them. Now, getting it through to your rack, what I often do, if I can't figure out a better way to get in there, there's not enough facility ceiling wise where I can barely fit anything. I can't fit that large base for the other method. I will just turn this vertical. I will remove uh, one of these things. I'll put some plywood to support my uh, screws that are gonna need to go through this. And then I'll screw this from underneath after drilling like a four inch hole with a hole saw through my ceiling. And then there'll be just this little bit poking out if I can manage it, I'll use the other half and I'll slip it in. But if I can't manage it, I'll just flip that over two. And then I've got two of these pathways. Why not? Two for one. So using this as a emergency method, it still looks good, but it's blue. So I'll frequently spray paint these white in order to get them to meld a little better with the environment. Okay. So that's a product you might use. So I've seen all kinds of things go through the ceiling. These soft uh, plastic racetracks will work as well. You can butt this up right up against the wall and go through a ceiling. So if you got your ceiling here, you can do this. I think this looks ugly and I think it draws people's eyes. So I'm not a fan of doing this, but it's better by far than a jagged cut in your ceiling and then a bunch of loose cables that even your best zip tie job isn't going to look very good. So if you have nothing else, you could use this. You might go directly to the top of your rack and that way no one ever sees the cables. Or you might go only halfway and you might put a little uh, plastic uh, ribbing right around this cut area. And then that would at least look like you tried, like you had a plan and you knew what you were doing when you did it. And that's really what that's all about. So when you watch my other videos as I build my networks, you're gonna probably see some variation on these products. Uh, I'll try to find links for them. They're not, they're specialty products, so they're not like things you find on Amazon or anything like that, but I'll try to link to the things that are appropriate. And in the comments, if you would please, I'm always really interested in what people use. So if you've got something that is better, I'm very interested to learn about it. I did see 
a product once in the field where it replaced the entire ceiling tile with a full hard plastic shell and it had all these cool little knobs in it that you could release and it would open up and get you access to cables. And for the life of me, I couldn't find it on the internet to buy one in order to do this video. So perhaps if you have a source for things like that, could be really interesting for everyone. I'd love to share an update. All right, well, that's it for this video. Uh, I hurt myself crushing myself on the metal. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap it up there and my fingers while I'm at it. Uh, if there's anything else, uh, feel free to shoot me a question and I really appreciate the views. Uh, I will see you on the next one. Happy network building, everyone.